Welcome rookies to this episode of Rookie's Guide to Iron the Law. We are on ranged attacks and we will be covering pages 20 to 23. In order to make a ranged attack, a model must have a target within a range of the weapon it's using, within its line of sight, and within the fire arc of the weapon it is using. Picking a target, it's pretty straightforward. You pick your target, you point at it, you say I'm shooting at you. You then check your range and line of sight. If you're using a one-handed weapon, you can assume it's your front arc, it's a two-handed ranged weapon, it's a focused front, it's a heavy weapon, it's focused front. It's worth remembering that the front arc is the front 50% of your base if you cut the base in half, whereas your focused front is roughly a quarter of the front. Line of sight, you have to basically draw a line between your model's base and the target model's base. If there's any terrain or models that are in the way that are taller than both the target model and the shooting model, line of sight is blocked and a different target must be chosen. To hit a target, you roll a number of combat dice equal to the firer's shoot stat, as we mentioned earlier. You then add any modifiers that may be in effect. These include the range modifier, there's plus minus. Target is a vehicle or a mounted model, you get plus one. The target is moving fast or has a fast moving marker, minus one. The attacker is within close range of the target, minus one. If any hit results are scored on the dice, the target has been hit. Zeros are not heroes. If modifiers reduce a model stat to zero, they have no chance of hitting the chosen target and have to select a different target or give up the idea of shooting. This is you can't have people shooting and killing if they're at zero dice. I like that rule. You don't get have a free shot, even if you're in negatives. Taking hits. If the number of hits rolled equal or higher than the target school stat, the target is pinned in addition to any other results of the hit. The effects of being pinned. Start your turn. You have to roll a special one versus your school stat. Otherwise, you have to use shake it off later in your turn. You can only ever be pinned once. If you're already pinned, you do not receive another pin marker. Don't Dodging hits. Now, you've been hit by a weapon. The defender gets to try and dodge. They roll a number of combat dice equal to their evade stat. If any special results are rolled, the hit is dodged and entirely ignored. You get minus one if they're using an incendiary weapon like a flamer, or you get plus one if they're using a blast weapon like a grenade or a missile launcher. If a model successfully dodges the incoming attack, the owning player can move their model three inches in any direction and change its facing as desired. Note that some blast weapons have a blast so large that they are not able to fully escape even if they dodge successfully. Let's pretend you've been hit, you failed to dodge, now what happens? You try to resist it. This represents your armor. If a hit isn't dodged, you roll a number of combat dice equal to the weapon's power stat to determine the power of the hit. Result equals one power. Any other result equals no effect. The target rolls a number of combat dice equal to its resist stat. You get plus one if the attacker is using two or more weapons, plus one if the target is in light cover, plus two if the target is in heavy cover, or minus one if you are shooting them in the back. For each armor they roll, you reduce the power of the weapon's attack by one. Now an important thing to remember is cover. Any weapons used in Mega City 1 are powerful enough to punch through barriers on a direct hit. Now the rules for cover is pretty simple. If the attacker's line of sight crosses any kind of cover, the defender can claim light cover. So there's a bench in the way, that's light cover. But if the defender is touching the bench, they can claim heavy cover. Light cover gives them plus one resist, heavy gives them plus two. Super, super simple. But for something to be counted as heavy cover, it needs to be of a tough material, i.e. metal, concrete, or plastic. Lightweight materials such as plastic, wood, glass, they're only at best going to give you light cover. So use a little bit of common sense here. Maybe chat things over before you start rolling dice, because some people might think that's going to give them heavy cover. Others would argue it'd be light cover. Don't fall into the trap of having arguments during a game. It's meant to be fun. So you've done your resists. Some shots have gone through. You now work out what's happened. So if your power, so the power is your leftover hit dice. Once all said and done, if you've got minus one or less, no effect. You completely whiffed your shot. If you've got zero, the target gets a stunned result, which they then receive a stunned marker. All stunned model stats, including move, are reduced by one for each stun marker they have sustained until the model uses shake it off removing.
remove the stun markers. You then get, if you got one, you are injured. You place an injury marker on the target model for the rest of the game. All model stats, including move, are reduced by one for each injury marker it has. Injury markers can be removed by taking a hunker down double action. If you scored two hits, you've seriously injured the target. You place two injury markers on the target model. All injured model stats are reduced by one for each marker they have sustained. Blah blah blah, same as injured previously. It's exactly the same, but you get three injury markers this time. Injuries will accumulate on a model, and beyond a certain point, the model will be classed as incapacitated and out of the game. If the model has so many stunned and or injury markers that its cool stat is reduced to zero, it counts as incapacitated meaning it's unconscious or dead, and is at least temporarily out of the game. Models that are incapacitated do not put their action chips back in the bag, and can take no more actions. Some armory cards, big mech cards, or certain skills can be used to retrieve the model, so please leave them on the table. A model that has been reduced to zero cool by stun markers only is said to have been subdued instead of incapacitated. This is important to note, for when you are sentencing your perp. I've never actually done that, but that's like a campaign rule. We'll maybe cover that at a later date. That just means they could have been arrested so they can escape maybe from the jail or you could rescue them from the rival game. And then we're pretty much at the end of range. There's just one special rule to go over and this will only affect the judges to begin with and special characters. If you've given them the gunfighter skill, if they successfully dodge the attack with the special result dice, they get to shoot back. But in order to shoot back, the model must not be pinned, must have the attacker in its front fire arc. So when you do your dodge, you move three inches and turn them. Make sure you turn to face the person who shot at you. And obviously you have a ranged weapon that can be used for a snapshot. You then basically roll the attack and shoot back straight away. Sometimes this could lead to what's called bullet time, where both models have the gunfighter skill. And if they're good enough, you can just keep rolling specials and shooting back and forth. And it's pretty cool to watch, but it's rare when it will happen. And that's it. That is ranged rules over with. Next week we'll do close combat. And then I think we're ready for a game after that. I think, yeah, we could probably move into a game after that because this vehicle's followed by terrain and we can worry about that stuff as we come to it. So I'm excited we're getting close to a battle report. Hope you're enjoying. Hope you like. Drop me a subscribe and all that good stuff. If you got any questions, drop them in the comments below. And as always, cheers for watching.